All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, with access to fewer resources and generally leaner t um, teams, small businesses need to be more creative and tactful in their approach to customer service or experience. That's not to say that they can't provide a top-notch experience. They absolutely can. They just need to be a little more focused with their efforts. Now, customer service is also important for small businesses because it opens a direct line of communication with customers. Those conversations can lead to product breakthroughs and insight or even reveal a new customer segment um, you don't even know or you didn't know that it existed. There's a strong correlation between customer experience and loyalty and those businesses that get it right are more likely to retain customers and have those customers re recommend their products or services to a friend. Now, what does customer experience mean to you? And in, uh, and in what ways do you believe it can impact um, small businesses? All right, so because she's our very own, let me just remind you people again, with experience in various <laughs> disciplines, including customer experience, customer service, customer loyalty, digital marketing, strategy, content development, and training, both in public and private sector across two continents, Uti Elu has been exposed to various business styles, strategies, approaches, and she's joined us live in the studio. Hey, was you know sometimes, eh? Som <laughs> <laughs> was that you? You know sometimes, eh? they, they underestimate the powerful yeah, women that sit on, yes. on the chair because yes. we don't just try behind to toot, we don't toot our horn. Mm -hmm. But you know, when we have opportunities like this, we don't miss it. <laughs> We're shy, but thank you so much, Uti. It's all right. Because, um, you know, you are giving back to small businesses. Yep. And I yeah. think, you know, you, you do it effortlessly because we've seen you, we've seen you uh, take on big organizations <laughs> and they're just going back to back. Uti, Elu, Uti, Elu. We say, ah, let our ways, uh, wait till they record it. Let them, let them enjoy well. just small. Come and learn from the... <laughs> Don't be looking at her with one. <laughs> ah, she's a madam. <laughs> but thank yeah, you so much, yeah, yeah. Uti. All right, so, I mean, small businesses, right? Um, mm. A lot of things has changed. Um, so, before social media, you know, you could easily, um, how do I put it, have contact with your customers because everybody needed to go physical to a store, mm -hmm. you know, to patronize mm -hmm. you and all of that. But uh, social media has made customer experience transcend beyond even. So, Physical. I've seen people say that I've been shopping from this. I don't even know who the person is. Mm. So, I keep wondering, so why would they stay? Because I used to feel like before, before somebody stays with you in your business, they must have that personal relationship. Ah, yeah. like, okay, they've experienced you in person mm -hmm. and you're such a nice person. That makes them come back. But now, uh, People are shopping. <laughs> People are buying Amazon. Everywhere. They are buying everywhere. You know, so there is definitely an experience that keeps them going back, even though this business seemingly are faceless. Yeah. So because they've not had a personal interaction with the um, the business mm. owners. So what exactly is that it factor that makes those um, customers go back? You know, what's the experience like mm. for them? So I love that you mentioned Amazon because um, technology has changed the face of customer experience. We, if I think of the last major milestone that has occurred, it would be COVID. Mm. That has changed how businesses um, are operating. So when we talk about creating experiences today, it's deliberate, mm. right? So even if I don't see you, Mani has been my customer for 10 years. I don't know what she looks like, but she's one of my best customers. That can happen today. In the past, it will never happen. You will probably have met her a couple of times. Yes, so send her by December. Gone to her yeah, exactly. <laughs> send her a hamper, send her a birthday card. Mm. You would have done all of those things. Mm, yeah. And those things are still perfectly valid, right? Depending on the type of business that you're running and the type of customer segments that you have, they're still valid. But today what has changed is, first of all, the customer has changed. Mm. So in the past, you had a different expectation from your bank than you had from your tailor than you had from your supermarket. But today, customer expectation is the same across board. What we're doing today is, rather than comparing my experience with um, bank A to bank B or shop A to shop B, I'm comparing my experience, the best experience I've had, regardless of whether it's in shop A, in bank B, mm. whatever business, that has I now been... have a standard mm. that has been set. Now, you talked about social media. Social media now has now raised the bar. So when social media first started, once somebody says, I'll go to social media, everybody like, oh my mm. God, what are they going to say? 
And then over the years, businesses started to get smarter. Business started to realize that, yes, it is possible for things to go viral on social media. Mm. But then it's also not as easy. Mm. So depending on the footprint that you have, right, you can post today and, and nobody will ever see no it. Engagement. If you don't have followers, if you yeah. don't have engagement. I mean, yes, we have a lot of bloggers today that, you know, somebody might tag somebody and it might then pick up. But yeah. it, it wasn't as easy to go viral as people thought. Yeah. So businesses started to go, ah, okay. I can actually come back and respond. So if you go on social media today, you see businesses respond in a way to challenge people. So before it was like, ah, this business did bad. It's gone wrong. But even the consumers have changed. So now you see people defending businesses. When they say something went wrong, so you no, see people come into the comments and, you know, so the whole landscape has changed. You can no longer differentiate on product. You can no longer differentiate on price. There's pretty much a competitor out there who is either doing the same thing or doing it better than you in terms of quality of product or doing it cheaper. Mm. So where does the real playground now exist? It is in the experience. Mm. So I am willing to pay more in shop B because I like the experience than pay less in shop A mm. because even though it's cheaper, mm -hmm. I don't get the experience yeah. that I want. Mm. So experience in itself has become a currency. True. So you can't afford as a business not to pay attention to the experience that you're creating mm. it's so so important for smes they always think that they are too small mm. yeah. they always think that they're too small so you talk to certain businesses and they go ah we can't afford it this thing or you give certain examples and they go ah but they're big companies they're big companies mm. <laughs> yeah so that's the first place where i find that for small businesses i always say look as a business owner you set the tone of your business and a lot of people are fighting. I want to get the best product. I want to get the best product. But if you ask them, what do your customers truly want? They probably can't tell you. So they're sourcing all sorts of different things. Have you noticed when you go into um, like clothing stores? We're starting to get better now. But do you remember clothing stores? Everywhere would be jam-packed. Mm. Squashed. You have to start trying to pick out one thing. You can't even see what they're selling. Because you're trying to be all things to all men. Hmm. So I see it. Oh, I think somebody will like it. You buy it. I see it. Oh, so you have all these products. But somebody will come into your store. Go through. They can't see they can't even, Some people will be turned off by it. Because yes. they can't even see I what you're selling. I'm, who has exactly. And then some people, they walk into your store. And you don't have anything that hmm. represents them. So it means that you don't understand your customer, your customer base. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So that becomes the problem. So first and foremost, as a business owner... I say, I say, look, you can't be all things to all men. What's your business niche? Who is your customer? So if you're a big bank, you will have lots of different segments of customers. But as a smaller business, you have less that income. That gives you even more uh, power because you can then streamline Absolutely. Your, your customer. So you've got smaller income. You've got less of a marketing budget. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is on a smaller scale. So you have to be more yes. deliberate and targeted. Yes. Who is my customer? There's no point wasting marketing spend or even your energy or your staff's energy trying to serve a customer who isn't your customer. Because mm. guess what? You're doing your business a disservice. Mm. You will never be able to please that customer. The experience you're trying to create, if you have even gotten to that, that far where you're creating an experience for your customer, you wouldn't have any, been able to satisfy the customer. So what happens is you run the risk of somebody then having a bad experience of your business and then telling other people. Mm -hmm. sure. So very important as a business owner to understand, most times we focus on our products. The business owner wants to get the product right. Mm -hmm. They want to get the pricing right so that they're profitable. But if you really, really want to go to the next step, you now need to think about the experience. Mm -hmm. What am I layering on it? That if somebody opens a store right next to me tomorrow, Selling the and exact, selling same, the exact thing. same product. Why would they what is to going you? to make people walk past that door okay, into my... So, hmm. um, <laughs> see, I've heard you've said so much. And in all that you've said, hmm. you've um, told us that um, customer service is the bedrock of any business. Hmm. And we know that a positive experience creates a second-time customer. Hmm. You know, but um, what really brings them back? What, what, what makes the um, customers come back? Is it the services or is it the product? So, I mean, a great product is fantastic. It doesn't matter how great the experience is. You still have to have a product that meets the expectations of your customer. Mm -hmm. Now, set that aside. The service also has to be thought about. 
But I like when you said service because I was hoping that somebody will allow me to do my two minute talk about yes. the difference between service, service and experience. And experience. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> so the service is great, right? Because, but the service only exists when somebody comes to you. Mm. So for me to serve you, you have to have a need. Exactly. You have to want something. Either you've bought my product and you need help with it, or you need some information about your product, about my product. Yeah. So there is a push and a pull. You are doing something that requires me to then respond. Mm. So service is reactionary, right? Um, and service is great. We're going to celebrate customer service. Next week is my own Christmas. Next week is my work Christmas. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be celebrating customer service week. And all of that is in the delivery. So you talk about service delivery. It's an yeah. action. It's doing something in reaction to something. But imagine you have customers. You bought something. And nothing has ever gone wrong with it. You've used it. It's been fine. You've never had reason to go back to that shop. Mm. What, how, the, can, the how can you be a loyal not customer? Yeah. Right? Because it was a one-off purchase, yeah. right? So there was no need for service. Mm. Now imagine if that business doesn't think about customer experience. Mm. Where will... So that means they would have to increase their marketing spend to keep bringing first-timers in, first in to come through the door. Exactly. And it. So at the end of the day, what you are trying to say is product over service. So the pro No, it's not even that. It's that you first need to understand that service is only a part of the journey. So I have a service. You came, you bought. I served you, you left. The product is fine. You never needed to ask me a question. You never needed anything else. You've gone. It's like a house. You bought a house. Mm -hmm. The house was fantastic. Great. Mm -hmm. And you've moved on. Where is the experience in what is going to bring you back? back? It now, and that's where you start to talk about experience. That's the difference. So service is a point in time. I need something you give me, you no. go. Experience is a business thinking about the end to end. So first of all, how do you find my business? That's the awareness is a starting point. Mm. So business owners today, social media is where everybody goes, right? But remember, we talked about your customer type. Is your customer type on social, social media? media. Is your customer type on Instagram or are they on Facebook? Or TikTok now. Or TikTok. Mm. So you've got to know and understand your customers to then determine how you build awareness. Some businesses need a website. Some businesses don't. So that's when you start to think about the experience. So now you've created awareness. Now I know of your business. Now I contact you. I want to see your product. What information about your product is out there? Mm -hmm. So you see social, small businesses today asking yeah. their customers for reviews, asking them to post comments, post pictures. Why? Because they're trying to make sure there's enough information out there. Out there. Yeah. That when I have a need, I know. There's, there's an association with your product. Yeah. Yes. And then there is enough information out there to say, ah, this particular business seems oh, to be yes. really good about yeah. this. As this everybody is saying nice things. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So today you yeah. want to buy something, what do you Especially do? Especially right now, the cosmetic industry. <laughs> exactly. Every time you go online, they tell you, oh, this cream is amazing. You know, baby girl skin. You know, this. I'm like, ah, should I buy this cream? <laughs> because I'm just hearing, the, I'm reading the reviews. Yep. And I'm like, so I get you. So you're getting that point yeah. of it. So you've got the... the the um, information out there. So you're building on the awareness. Then this is, you ask now where product comes in. Yeah. You have to then have a great product to back it up. Otherwise, if you didn't have a great product, you wouldn't have had the great reviews and the good awareness. Exactly. Then you buy the product. So you've bought your cream now. You don't know whether you should use it in the morning or use it in the night. So what is the experience? What information mm -hmm. have I given you, you to have to experience the product in the way that you will get the best and out of it. And if you don't give me, I don't use it at the... Like, you know, there's some cream they tell you don't use during the day exactly. because of the sun. Exactly. You use at night. So if so I use that cream during the day and I get bad burned... Experience. <laughs> exactly. That's the bad experience. So you have businesses... You see some businesses today who even add some little cards when you buy yeah, stuff. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say that. Yes. little card. The, the lady that, that, oh, yeah. that, they that make sells so hair. Special. So what they have done with the hair business is that now they don't just give you hair. Mm. They give you a brush. If it is the other hair that needs a spray bottle... To give they the put a spray bottle. bottle. They put a they put a brush. They put a they they mm -hmm. now put a small card that tells you how the, to care, how for to your hair. care for your hair. Mm -hmm. Okay, all of that is Jege. building <laughs> on the experience. So it seems like a little serere, a little sweetener. But it goes along. All of these yeah. things are creating that experience that you are defining. Mm. Because remember, you need the hair to look fly for somebody to say, Ah, where did you get that hair? Yeah. And you say, Oh, I got it from this place. Ah, don't worry. If you go to them, they will check you. They will tell you what you need. That's what you're trying to create. The end point is customer loyalty and advocacy. Mm. So 
you give them the information to have success with your product to love your product free of charge advocates to recommend your product <laughs> because you. it is cheaper for me to convince you Ua, mm. to buy from money than it is mm. for money to take out an ad on social media or on tv to sell the product absolutely True. She will trust me more Absolutely. when I tell yes, her. Yes, I'll trust your review. That means she has bought that and I've told her. <laughs> that's the power of reviews. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's the power of reviews. So you get to that point where you've created mm. that yeah. positive impact. Now your product is selling itself. Mm. Mm -hmm. Your experience is selling your business. Mm. And you're not even spending money advertising. Oh, exactly. You know what? I have one question for you. But let us quickly go on a break. I, I see that. Oh God, we'll continue to, to 10 o'clock. <laughs> Stay with us. <laughs> Alright, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tune in, see that we are having an amazing time. I think we should not be bringing guests again. Yeah, I'm <laughs> telling you, well, okay. we'll just be giving us back to back. We're discussing customer experience and we're focusing on small businesses right now remember you can join the conversation send us an sms or whatsapp is read one eight zero three eight four six six three you can also tweet at us at way show africa one with hashtag way show so uti so now you've done all these fantastic things the customers all your people are sending reviews in and all of that so a friend of mine went into a store based on the reviews i mean this person they have like boutiques you know all over and you know people are always talking about how nice their clothes are and everything then she now walks into the store to order i mean to pick up a dress and all of that she the experience was horrible like so she said she walked into the store and the girls were looking at her like as if maybe she had come to steal or something you know mm. like it was she said it was just too much. She said, so I now told her about another place where I get my dresses from. She said, is, she now mentioned that, but is it that I said no, it's a different state because she's never, wow, go, that thing. no matter how nice the clothes that she sees on social media, she's never going to enter that story again. And this mm. is a big issue. There is a big disparity from the experience some people face online and when you don't physically visit businesses. Okay. How do we correct this? So I love that question. It's a fantastic question. It's a concept called the moment of truth. So what are the most important aspects of a business? Mm. If you are selling clothes, right, then the first time you see the outfit, the first time you try it on, the first time you engage maybe somebody if you go into a store, these are all different moments of truth. But every business is different. So for a bank, for example, Opening an account is a moment of truth. If the account opening process doesn't go well, you probably abandon it, mm. right? Mm. If you've successfully opened an account, then transacting is the next thing. If the transaction fails, there's one bank it's a problem. That, but I've just abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> if the transaction fails, there's a problem. Mm. But if it fails and it's quickly reversed, mm. it's you get what I mean. So, what you, what happened in that business was that you've created good awareness, you have a good product. Mm your online experience so maybe when she chatted on social media the person was fantastic oh you we have it in stock yes is this price is this color is this okay i want to go into your store the business has not defined the experience in the store hmm. so you haven't told your staff in the store that the minute somebody walks in somebody must be there to greet them somebody must be there to say oh, right i understand that just by looking at you i can tell that you're a size 12. Mm -hmm. what kind of outfit are you looking for today are you going for an event um what colors do you like you like black, I like colors. So there's the key things that you need to define that should happen. There should be a template. Exactly. So you need to define what should happen at that point in time. Mm. Because that's a moment of truth for that business, for that mm. type of business, is the in-store experience. Mm. So because you have told your staff what to do, as soon as you walk in, you're wild. Imagine if you walked into a store, oh, welcome to the store, madam. Oh, you look so fantastic. Are you looking for a particular outfit? Is there something... And somebody's just engaging you. And they tell you that we have sweets. Exactly. We have some sweets. And they, you know, they, <laughs> and you, do you know what I mean? So there's all sorts of little things. And don't forget that in Nigeria, up. it's actually easier because we are conditioned for poor service. Mm -hmm. So any little you do, people are like, people, wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so really easy. as little as giving you words. Very yes. easy to please. So that's why people, it's very easy to please because if you just did the barest minimum, you would stand out, mm. right? So I tell people. All these people that are shopping on, that are selling on Instagram and everywhere. I asked one day, I said, do you have the list of your customers? Hmm. Do you have their phone numbers? Mm -mm. So somebody says, 
I have a friend. She sells bras. Your size, your size. Buy a few things. Your size is your size. Mm. I said, every, every time you get new stock, every single person that has ever bought in that size for you, you, you must tell them. them a message. So, right. and these are things that are not overly expensive, but it's deliberate. So, you take what you know of the customer that you have, mm. and you create more business. It is here in Nigeria that I've seen people go absolutely nuts that they were not wished happy birthday by a business. Yes, yeah, so. <laughs> it goes a long way. A four naira SMS. In fact, if you're sending me both as a business. my birthday. That one naira 50 couple. Two naira 50 couple. I actually couple, two don't couple. like it when I see all the messages from, from all the, the bank. banks because I have accounts in many I banks. love that you said I that. I don't like it. So remember You're I talked about me. customer engagement mm. and understanding your customer. You are different, man. Yes. You don't like all those messages. No. So as a business, do I know your preferences? Hmm. True. So these are the things that you now, and for a small business, it's easier because you have less customers. So you have the ability to simply, you know what, say, it's an Excel sheet. When you pay, can I take your phone number? Can I take your yeah. name? What did you buy? Hmm. Most places have some sort of EPOS system that you scan the thing. So you even have a record of what was purchased. Hmm. It's a simple thing that changes the business. So today, when you see businesses that are leveraging technology, that will say, there are some businesses you go to today, they'll say, oh, can I have your email address so I can send you a receipt? Because yes. you know, if somebody yes. asks you, can I have your email address? You say, no, no, I don't want you to bother we'll me. Just be oh, no, I just want to send, send you your receipt. receipt yeah. to you. I've collected your email address. Yes. Thank you. Oh, I've so collected that's your what phone they number. Do. Yes, no. Mm. So, and it's, and it's so simple. So you find yourself now being able to create a database of customers. Mm. Yes. And you're collecting information. So on your birthday, uh, uh, this person, oh, you bought this thing. Uh, I'm running a 10%, 20% promo. Email is free. Hmm. But, what's it? So let, let's stay on that SMS mm. and email for a bit. Mm -hmm. Because my dental clinic, now only once in a year, with the same message. Merry Christmas. You know, we will Christmas, so... <laughs> Happy birthday to David Sally. Happy birthday to Alpha Sally. Happy birthday. To On one, just one day. Once in a year. So they will, I mean, I'm saying that every person okay, in the family okay, gets okay. One, one email oh, okay, from them. Okay. And I find that a bit worrisome, right? If you really are targeting business, it's not enough for you to just wish me happy Thank birthday, you. right? How, so what if I had gotten a message to say, what's the dental situation like? The Christmas, it was just, I'm giving them free tips. Christmas just finished. You must have mm -hmm. had a lot well, of sweet things, you, you know, come in for a 50% discount. Uh, what's it called? Um, wash and all of that. There's every likelihood. Yeah, that's that true. I'm going to, to just so, take it. So yeah, you start yeah. to think about oh, it. Oh, my darling. Yeah. I, I'm a, you know, I'm learning from the best. <laughs> you, you are rubbing <laughs> off of me. Yeah, I was going to say that because, mm -hmm. right, there's every likelihood that I would I would go for that um, yeah. dental claim. Mm -hmm. You know, I suppose you're sending me a happy birthday. So, and with what money said, people do not understand their customers, right? They just do a one size fit all, especially for bigger oh organizations. Oh my mm. God. You know, so how do As we begin to help correct yeah. that for them? So, bigger organizations. Wait, sorry, is, let me ask. Sure. <laughs> Since we're talking about the bigger organizations, Go TV. <laughs> ah, don't call me. Do don't <laughs> Sorry, mm. Nico, but I, you know? I tell you the truth. I get so many phone calls and they are very offensive. Mm. It's like we've mm. noticed you've not paid. Like, seriously. I'm not interested in your subscription anymore. Mm. Okay. So the thing of it for, for big businesses, right, is it's harder. Like I said, you mm. have a lot of customers. Okay. And a lot of times they collect quite a bit of information about you. But that information and that data is not leveraged. So remember I said the thing about collecting preferences. One of the things that is fantastic to collect at the time that you onboard a customer, which mm -hmm. is when you get a customer into your business for the first time, yeah. please collect their preferences. Hmm. How would they like yeah. to be addressed? Hmm. How would they like to be contacted? Well, this is, is it email? To. Is it phone? Even when you say phone, is it call? Is it SMS? Is it WhatsApp? Collect preferences. So that you are also not wasting your time, effort, and energy, energy. and money. Resources. Because a lot, do you know how many SMSs I block that I just get? I don't like SMSs. Because 160 characters, in, as far as I'm concerned, is not enough to speak to me. So if you are sending me a 160 um, SMS, character SMS, that means I have to do something to find out more. We're you just don't have so a sip of water. Drink. Take a glass, mm. right? I want the full bottle of water. Mm. So I prefer an email. Mm. I want the shot, the, the when, shot cup. When you call I'm... me, when you call <laughs> Two me, different people. and you say, Two different. 
Hello. Me, it depends on my mood. And you say hello. Sometimes I'm like, you want the bottle. Do you get me? <laughs> and you say hello, Mister. You've lost ha, me already. Ah, you've lost me. Oh. And this, right? this would have called. They'll say, um, um, good, good morning, sir. I said it means you're not. You're talking to the wrong person. Exactly. Goodbye. I am because you. Me because and for me, because my name is Uti, right? They make the association. Oh. I think it's a guy. Mm. So they say, "May I speak to Mister?" I'm like, clearly, you're not serious about what you're trying to do. Yeah. So the importance, and this is where we we come back to the small businesses. Mm. These are this is information that a lot of businesses don't know how to collect because they say, "Ah, you just bought from me." Uh, this, but imagine how much you can collect when you are chatting with someone on social media. Mm. It's actually even harder when you when you come into a shop because you buy, you pay, you, you go. go. Most times when they start telling you, can I collect? And then you're like, no, 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 no. Which is, I said, develop the tactics to get what you you're want. Right. Oh, we need to Change send you all some your additional... E even if it's not e-receipting, because some people, again, they'll say, oh, I don't have the money for that. Mm. You say, oh, I want to send you a 5% discount mm. next time you're coming in. Can I get information ABC? Mm. But even when you're on social media, at least for you to order, you will collect a name phone number, email address, or house yeah, address. The handle, everything. You will ask the person for email address. Deliveries it's now easier. are you made life exactly. easy because they will deliver to your doorstep. Exactly. So you start to see ways in which you can collect. But beyond that basic information, now you start to collect preferences. preferences. How do you understand the difference between money that likes an SMS and OT that wants an email? Yes. You start to think. So this is where small businesses need to start to think about how they can collect this information. Mm. Because this is where you start to make a difference. In the fact that Manny always will get my messages because I always send her SMS, so I know she will read it. Yeah. If you send me SMS, not only will I see it, I will block you. <laughs> I would read it even better than or quicker than I will read the um, WhatsApp messages and the emails. You mm. know why? Because it's brief. Mm. I, my life is like this. I scare, scare. I need to. I'm on the go. Let me read it. Like if you, if the SMS is two pages of SMS, I'm not gonna read it. <laughs> So you have to know the different customers that yeah. you have. Yeah. So like I said, it's, it's harder for big businesses hmm. because you have a lot of customers. You now need to start yeah. trying to define hmm. uh, what makes this set the same. Can yeah. I put them together? Hmm. But even in the set that is the same, you agree that a rich man that has 100 million and a rich man that has 1 billion, they are not, they the, are same. not in the same class. But everybody will say they are rich. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of... But when you have smaller businesses, it just takes a little bit of thought, a little bit of yeah. channeling, that idea, which is why I said it usually starts from the owner to say, how do I want to distinguish mm. my business? Ah, Don't just focus see. on the product. So, money mm. has a law firm. Let me give a small... Please give small me, because what, what you tips. just said just now, you say it starts from the owner. I understand. The owner might communicate, communicate, and they will not even get it, but it's all right. Money's guys in our office, the staff that work directly with her, will understand money way better than the security guard at the gate. Mm. But she has a security guard. Mm. Mm -hmm. Has she stopped to tell her security guard exactly what they should say when somebody arrives? Yes. How they should park a car when yes. somebody arrives? Mm. What they need to tell a car. So you see some mm -hmm. businesses, they will say, your car is parked at your own risk. Mm. Certain things Thank that you. you need to define. How can you define, tell me that? Right? Certain things that you need to define. So when you start to think about every micro, every part of your business, experience doesn't happen by chance. Right? Yeah. You must tell down to your cleaners how to mop your floors. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. How to, you know, what if you mop a floor with in the detergent yes. versus floor cleaner, there's a difference. There's a difference. You need to define all of those things. So it's a lot of work. And it's not something you do overnight. You do it with time. Mm. So what is most important and what will make the most impact to your business? Mm. So you collect data and you say you're making data-driven decisions. But those are the, that's how deliberate you have to be about it. Hmm. So most people will say, oh, uh, my customer service people, I've told them to smile. Or I've told them to say, welcome, and to, social, that, uh, that is customer welcome to social and so business. Hmm. Then what happens next? After what? What do they do? <laughs> have you empowered them that, so why do we enjoy Amazon? So, hmm. you know, <laughs> Uti, you know, sorry to cut you. Hmm. You remember the place you recommended I take my son for his birthday? Yes. Ah, I will go there. 10, 10 million times over and over. Please, you need to tell me about because it. Because my son's birthday. First of all, from the phone conversation, when we had, because we had booked the meal ahead of time and everything, it was back to back. Okay, so madam, this has been sorted. So have you confirmed this day? It was, then when we now got there, you know, it was oh, okay. They've assigned a manager to me to ensure that everything is in place. So the menu is already. So how would you like? Ah, ah, I said, eh, eh, ah, ah. I thought the experience was uh, online. Mm -hmm. Until the experience mm -hmm. that came at it was it was not far from what it I had consistent started. Across the board. journey for me, the customer journey was amazing because it was not different from what I'd experienced. 
from the phone conversations all the way to mm. the final day. It was such a beautiful day. Yeah. And they made suggestions. Yes. So, again, think about when you shop on Amazon. It's something that we've now become so used to. It's not groundbreaking anymore. You buy a remote and they tell you people that bought the remote also bought the batteries bought this, also bought this, this. this but even in your business you don't need an algorithm to tell you that you need to be thinking ahead so you understand your product better than anybody so even down to the person that is selling let me use Uwa's outfits today mm. it's looking like Adire right yes right there's a way you wash it mm. to stop it from fading mm. now imagine oh I bought the Adire right mm. I've bought this outfit now you've you said oh you've given me the care tips, right? I gave yes. you a little card that yes. said, this the is what you tips. should, this is what you do. Imagine if you cycle back in three months and say, oh, hi, Ua, how's the dress going? We hope you've had um, a pleasant experience with it and it's still looking lovely. By here's a way, reminder on your care tips. And then here's a few ways in which you can style your outfit. And you send her a few pictures hmm. with uh, where it's built. New belt, ones. Where even it's with shoe, new ones. And even tell her that, do you know we have new designs? Yeah, you know, hey, it to, if you like this one, I'm gonna come the back. people that like this one, there's this, this, this. So you find similarities in this, mm. in other products that you have and mm. you share. So whilst you are doing this hard effort of, I need to find customers, I need to find customers, your customers are right there in your, you've sold to them already. It's easier to get the customers you have, 80-20 rule. Get the 20 to do the 80. You're buried in hand. Then keep trying to find more. So yes, it's great to find more. But imagine if you did that. Oh, I will be selling your market for you. Mm. She'll be like, ah, you like my outfit? Or oh, ah, this shop is fantastic. It's just like what you're wearing. That exactly. has taken years. That has spent years, exactly. <laughs> so that's what it is. So you create that excitement around your business so because the goal, the overall goal of customer experience, mm. like I said, is first that I get to the point where I'm loyal to keep on mm. purchasing. And then and that I advocate that I will tell money, money, yeah. ah, come and buy. Me, because I'm in this space, I'm an advocate. Mm. If I see a business that I like, I... The, as I'm living there, I've told like one, two, three people. Yes, so. And those are the kind of customers that you then want to attract. So mm. you create a deliberate experience for the right type of customer. Mm. They have success with your products then. Finally, Manny, we have one question for, for Uti. While mm. we're trying to pull out that question, I want to say to small businesses, I want to ask you this question. What's it costing them not having that experience? Oh. Wow. So, how much does it cost you today to acquire a customer? The money you're spending on social media ads, the money you're spending dealing with customer complaints, yeah. hiring staff, there's a cost to everything, mm. right? Mm -hmm. um, not delivering or not thinking about your customer experience is detrimental to your business in the long run. Mm. Because this outfit today, mm. right? We have a brand that you and I like. She started off selling a very unique kaftan. Yeah. Today, there are like 20 other people trying to copy it mm -hmm. at a cheaper price. Mm -hmm. So if you were not particularly enamored to the brand, you'd just be like, ah, why will I pay 10K here when I when can I pay 6K here? Yeah. But if you have gone to her store, you have experienced her staff, hmm. you have, that girl has called you on the phone to speak to you, right? It means that you've connected with that brand. Hmm. The experience that they've created has made the difference. So, 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 so critical for us in that experience that if you are not doing it, you are losing money. Mm. That's the simple thing. Absolutely. Because one, you're not leveraging the customers that you have. Two, the people that are even coming to you, do you know what kind of experience they have? So you see some people that own businesses, they must always be present. Mm. They must always be in their shop. They must always be in their salon. Why? If you define the way things should be and you put processes in place and you train your people, you have policies around everything that you do, it will continue to run. So that's the goal for you, is define everything. So when you don't, you are losing business. Absolutely. And you will be more effort to get business. To get business. Money. Please, my question to your resource guest, your <laughs> own in-house OT, <laughs> is how can a small business owner deal with complaints? Supposing a boutique is highly recommended, and you go there for a purchase, and it appears that what you bought is returned because it was later discovered to have some defects, maybe factory error, how would the customer react if not replaced? I'm talking from experience. This is Austin from Delta. Okay. So, first things first. Businesses must always view complaints as a gift. Feedback. I can choose to simply walk away. And, and not complain back. and never come back. Thank you. So, when I complain, I'm actually giving you an opportunity 
to turn around a bad situation. And you actually, data shows that customers who have complaints and the complaints are well handled they are more they loyal yeah. than customers who never have complaints, mm -hmm. right? So a complaint is an opportunity. If you know your product oh, well, really? right? If you know your product well. So for this person who went to a boutique and bought something, now, typically, in this part of the world, we deal with a lot of integrity issues, a lot of fraudulent issues. So mm. we tend to have a lot of places that have no return policies for yeah, a lot of, of reasons. Trust Right, issues. yes. So we, we have all of those kind of things. But a business has to, in the same way that you have a marketing budget, you have to have a budget for service issues like this. Mm. Right? Where, because you know your product, when I gave the example of Ua's outfit and coming back three months later, mm -hmm you kind of have to know the quality of product. So if you're not producing your product, if you are, say, you're just buying wholesale Third and selling, sell. you have to know the quality of your product, yeah. right? It has to be tested. So that if somebody comes back and tells you, ah, this thing had a hole in it, mm. you know that, okay, a factory defect is possible because this brand, they are not so mm -hmm. good. Or, ah, it's not possible, there must have been an error. But you have to define what, potentially, if a customer has bought 100,000 hours worth of products from you, how much, how much profit did you make from them? And what percentage of that profit are you putting aside? If it's in this kind of business mm. where you may need returns. You're not going to give everybody returns. And you don't yeah, expect right. to see everybody. returns every, every day. Time. Right? Sure. But if you have a big ticket customer that came into your boutique and spent a lot of money on it, Thank and she comes you. back, you there's a sacrifice her. you make because you want to keep that relationship going. You have to define the acceptable level of loss. So the same way you define how much you will spend on marketing, mm. Is and the same you way you would to dedicate some money to it. It may not necessarily always be money. Mm. You may find that, okay, I'm able to replace, switch. I'm able to exchange. Mm. Yes. Because that product in itself that you are collecting back, right? It's you've gonna you've sell. exchanged for the customer. You've created a fantastic experience. This one now, Come depending in. on the extent, you can sell it, mark it down, and still sell it. And Thank you say you're you. selling as is. Mm. So that is a way to then do it. So you don't so totally lose you out. You don't totally lose sides. out. So it's really about defining, understanding that customer base, understanding the quality of product. Of course, if you buy, if you are selling a three three k to two k, then your customers also have an understanding that uh, if I wear it once or twice, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Not be saying I buy clothes. Exactly. Do you get what I mean? And so, it's not the bend. Uh -huh. So when you look at so when you look at your price point, mm -hmm. you start to create niche experience. Hey. I can't buy something of 50k and I come and tell you you had a problem, then you are speaking English. Uti, we are going to continue. Uti, we are going to continue. Ah. Ah. No customer, Uti, you don't know, even let me ask you some ah. questions. No verse, no verse, no verse. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm tired. But thank you so much, our very own, in hearts. <laughs> Uti, thank you so I mean, this was fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Manny. We're going to continue. Uti, just please. Easy. We have to continue. Because this customer complaint is ah, I have is a big one. I have stories. Hmm. Jeez. Before we go, I show you follow us everywhere at Wayshu yeah. Africa, TikTok, everywhere. Instagram, T Twitter, Facebook, everywhere, YouTube. Now, follow us, drop your comment, and more importantly, follow all the engagement, like, share. This show of today, go and look for the link and share to people that need it, small businesses that need it. It's very important. Small things that you do that will just transform your business. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. There is a spiritual aspect of our lives. When we give, we receive. When a business does something good for somebody, that somebody feels good about them. And definitely, they will definitely come back. We'll see you guys again. I hope you come back on Monday at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation <laughs> to your screen. <laughs>